Hello dear children, these are the textual questions from the lesson The Portrait of a Lady for Class 11. Mention three phases of the author's relationship with his grandmother before he left the country to study abroad. The answer is the first phase of the author's relationship with his grandmother was the author's childhood when they lived together in the village. They were very close friends. His parents left him with her and they went to live in the city. They were constantly together. She used to wake him up in the morning and get him ready for school. Then she would fetch his wooden slate, a tiny artney ink pot and a red pen. After a breakfast of stale chapatis, she accompanied him to the school. She carried several chapatis for the village dogs. She used to read the scriptures in the temple which was attached to the school. After school hours, they would walk back together. The second phase of the relationship began with their being called to the city. That was a turning point in their friendship. He used to go to an English school in a motor bus. The grandmother did not go to school with him. She remained confined at home. As the years rolled by, they saw less of each other. She did not like the English school as there was no teaching about God and scriptures. She hated Western science and music. The third phase of this relationship started with the authors going to the university classes. There he was given a room of his own. The common link of their friendship was snapped. His grandmother accepted her seclusion with resignation. Question number two. Mention three reasons why the author's grandmother was disturbed when he started going to the city school. And the answer is, the grandmother was disturbed by the following three reasons. Authors telling her the English words and Western signs, which she did not understand. Point number two is, no teaching about God and scriptures in the school. And point number three is music lessons given to the author in the school as she considered music is fit only for harlots and beggars and not meant for gentle folks. Question number three mentioned three ways in which the author's grandmother spent her days after he grew up. And the answer is, when the author grew up, the grandmother became lonely. She accepted it as her fate and found out new ways for spending her time. She now spent most of her time at the spinning wheel from morning till evening. From sunrise to sunset, she sat by the spinning wheel and rarely talked to anyone. She always prayed to God. Her lips moved in inaudible prayers. Her fingers were telling the beads of her rosary. The third way in which the old lady spent her time was by feeding the sparrows. She would sit in the veranda. She would break the bread into little bits and throw them towards hundreds of little birds gathered around her. They came and perched on her legs and shoulders. Feeding the sparrows used to be the happiest half hour of the day for her. Mention the odd ways in which the author's grandmother behaved just before she died. And the answer is, before the grandmother's death, a change came over her her behavior was changed. She collected the women of the neighborhood, took a broken drum and sang of homecoming of warriors the whole night. She did not pray that day. She was very much excited. 
other family members persuaded her to stop. That was the first time that she did not pray. The next morning, she got a mild fever. She herself declared that her end was near and continued praying without wasting any time. By talking to others, she lay peacefully in bed, praying and telling her beads. Her lips stopped moving. The rosary fell from her lifeless fingers. Her face turned pale. Everyone understood that she was no more. Question number five is, mention the ways in which the sparrows express their sorrow when the author's grandmother died. And the answer is, when the grandmother died, thousands of sparrows expressed their sorrow by sitting scattered in the veranda, mourning her death. The grandmother's dead body was lying there. They were silent. Otter's mother threw some pieces of bread but did not eat them. When they carried grandmother's corpse off, they flew away quietly. Thus, the sparrows mourned the dead and paid their silent tribute to the old woman. Talking about the text. The author's grandmother was a religious person. What are the different ways in which we come to know this? And the answer is, the author's grandmother was a highly religious lady. Her one hand was always busy in telling the beads of a rosary. Her lips constantly moved in an inaudible prayer. She used to get up early in the morning. She did her morning prayers in a monotonous sing-song. The grandmother accompanied the author to the school and she used to sit in a temple reading scriptures which was attached to the school. It was because of her religious nature that she could not like the new English school in the city she was unhappy because there was no teaching about God and scriptures at a city school. Being a religious lady and a widow, she hobbled about the house in a spotless white sari. When she realized that her end was near, she stopped talking. She lay peacefully in bed, praying and telling the beads of her rosary till she took her last breaths. The next question is, describe the changing relationship between the author and the grandmother. Did their feeling for each other change? And the answer is, the changing circumstances changed the relationship between the author and his grandmother. The author and his grandmother lived as close friends in the village. A turning point came in their relationship when they came to the city to live with author's parents. The author joined an English school in the city. She was busy spinning her wheel and fed the sparrows. She was unhappy with the education being given to the author at the English school. The grandmother became disturbed as there was no teaching about God and scriptures in the school. She became more offended when she came to know that author was learning music. When the narrator grew up, he went up to the university and then the common link of the friendship between the author and the grandmother was snapped because earlier they were sharing the same room but now the author was given a room of his own. His grandmother accepted her seclusion with resignation but she was happy 
when he returned from abroad. No, I don't think that their feelings for each other changed due to the increasing physical distance between them. Would you agree that the author's grandmother was a person strong in character? If yes, give instances that show this. And the answer is, the author's grandmother was a strong, religiously motivated person. She hated modern views and ideas. She had certain strong views. Being a religious lady and a widow, she hobbled about the house in a spotless white dress. She used to get up early in the morning. She said her prayers in a monotonous sing-song. Her one hand was always telling the beads of her rosary. She was the symbol of peace and contentment. She had certain rigid ideas about life. She liked the village school because it was attached to the temple. She sat in the temple reading the scriptures. She hated the English school in the city for various reasons. She was unhappy that there was no teaching about God and scriptures. She considered music fit only for harlots and beggars and not meant for gentle folks. When the author returned from abroad after five years, he found her in the same condition. She declared that her end was near. There were some unique changes in her behavior. She lay peacefully in bed, praying and telling her beads. We may not agree with her outdated views, but she was a strong and determined character. She led her life and never compromised with her principles. She loved her grandson, but never became sentimental or emotional.